What's up guys, how are you all doing? Today, I'm going to be attempting the impossible. We are going to try and guess all 18 of the UK Q School qualifiers 2021. So if I miss someone or if you think that someone deserves a spot on this list, then let me know in the comment section below and I will have a read and you can give me your reasonings behind it. But this is my list. This is just people who I think is going to qualify. Obviously, I'm probably not going to get all 18 correct, but I might get a few correct. So we'll come back to this in a month's time or whatever whenever Q School's finished and see how accurate I was. So let's get into the list. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Like 70% of you watching this right now are not subscribed. So you might as well sub while you're there. I'm nearly at 25,000 subscribers. Thank you for 24, by the way. Let's get into the list. Okay, so Q School is split up into two stages. We have the final stage and the first stage. We'll just call them stage one and stage two. Uh, in stage one, there are a number of players who I've chosen. I've actually chosen eight players in total. So I've chosen eight players from stage one and I've chosen 10 players from stage two. So let's start up at the top of the list. Number one, my first player who I think is going to qualify through Q School 2021 in stage one is Niall Colton. I think I said his name right. I probably didn't. I apologize, Niall. I know he watches my videos sometimes as well. So what's up, bro? I think he qualifies. I think he qualifies through stage one and I think he gets a tour card in stage two. Now, my reasonings behind this is he's had a really good, really good season. It's been, even though it's been like, a, I'm going to say this now, it's been a very weird season 2020, but we're going to go with the stats anyway. So 2020, he had a season high of 104.4 average. He averaged over the whole year uh, 87.96 and he got some good results. He played well. He did well. So, yeah, Niall is my number one pick. Then we have got Danny Baggish. I think a lot of people are expecting Danny Baggish to get through Q School. I certainly am. I know he recently had COVID, so hopefully that's not going to affect his darts when it comes to Q School. But I think he's too good not to get a tour card. So, Danny Baggish, season high of 100.8 and a season average of 92.38. I think he gets a tour card. And I think he gets one kind of comfortably. He probably wins a day. If he's playing well, he probably wins a day. And gets one on merit. Next up, Stephen Burton. Quite local to me. I've played him a few times. One of the best games I've ever played was against him and I still got beat. So he's a good player. Not saying that I'm a good player, but he is a good player. He's had a season average of uh, 86.1 and a season high of 101.6. Probably, I think he's the lowest running season average in my, he is. He's the lowest running season average in my whole list, but I do think he's more than capable of getting a tour card. Probably should have got a tour card last year, but it was like between him and Lisa Ashton. So who knows, who knows, but I'm going to say it's Steve Burton on my third pick. Next up, we have got Matt Campbell. Didn't play a lot of darts last year, but he did play in the World Championship and he made a really good account of himself and the World Cup of Darts. I can't forget the World Cup of Darts. Very, very good player. I think, like Baggish, he's one of those players who, if he, if he turns up and plays well, uh, I, I think he qualifies and he probably qualifies on a like a, on a set day. He probably, probably gets there on merit without even having to worry about all the merit. I think he's that good. I think he is that good. He's a very good player. So Matt Campbell is on my list. Next up, we have got Nick Fullwell. Now, you know when you when one of your friends is playing darts and you know that they've got that ability. I'm not saying I'm friends with Nick Fullwell. I've, I've literally met him a handful of times. But when you when you see someone play like an extremely good level of darts, but they never really achieve their best, that's how I feel with Nick Fullwell. He's someone who for years and years I have said I have said will be a top level professional dart player, and he's just kind of it's a weird one. He's kind of never lived up to the expectation that I had of him, if that makes sense. But anyway, when I used to mark for him back when he had a tour card, probably like six or seven years ago. He was one of the most impressive dart players in spells that I have ever seen. And the fact that he's not one of the top 32 now is quite baffling to me, but I think he is that good. I think he's plenty good enough to get a tour card. And uh, yeah, one of the best games I ever marked was his. Uh, and yeah, I think he's really good. So hopefully he pulls it out. Hopefully he plays well and hopefully he gets a tour card. Uh, he has had a season high of 101.1 and a season average of 87.23, by the way. Hello, Editor Jack here. Uh, I forgot to put Danny Lauby on the list. So just quickly, Danny Lauby had a season high of 98.9 and a 2020 average of 87.5. He played in the World Championships, played really well. Danny Lauby is going to go right around here on my list. I forgot to add him in. Sorry, Danny. 
Next up, Dan Reed, a player who I haven't actually really heard of or noticed before. I was just flicking through some statistics and his name was up there at the top. Uh, he has had a season average of 90.86 and a season high of 100.4. I I didn't, I literally wouldn't have even put him in, in the list unless I saw his statistics for the last year. Seems to be a really good player. I've never heard of him. I don't even know what he looks like, but I think with stats like that, I'm going to say he's got a good chance of getting a tour card. So, Dan Reed, whoever you are, Dan, good luck, bro. Um, yeah, I'm picking him. Yeah, good player. And the last player from my round one or stage one is going to be Shane McGurk. I've probably said his name wrong as well, but I remember watching him when he was quite a youngster. I think he's quite young, if I'm thinking of the right person. I think he's quite a young player, but very, very capable player. Uh, season average of 89.9 um, .9 and a season high of 98.6. Good player. So, yeah. Definitely got potential, definitely able to get a tour card. Next, we've got the people who have already got into stage two. These are the players who I think are going to be getting a tour card. Starting off with number one, it is the gold finger, Andrew Gilding. I think it's silly to look past him. One of the best players on the on the challenge tour this year or 2020. So I'm going to say Andrew Gilding. Plus, we all want to see his big old thumbs up. Uh, in the in the next season so i'm gonna say andrew gilding uh running average from 2020 was 89.78 and he had a season high of 101.5 average as well so very good player i think he will get a tour card next up we have got scott mitchell again can't really look past scott mitchell um very very capable player season average of 91.19 and a season high of 102.6 so scott mitchell would be silly not to put him in this list i think he's got one of the better chances out of everyone uh in q school 2021 for the uk to get a tour card so i'm going scott mitchell next on my list i've gone for joe mernon he's just lost his tour card but i think he's more than capable of getting a tour card back uh, he's had a season average of 90.35 and a season high of 101.3 very capable player not much to say about him he's just good so we're gonna say we're gonna go with joe mernon next simon stevenson also has just lost his tour card as well but he kind of he's one of them players who when he when he needs to he pulls it out of the bag very very capable player uh season average of 87.46 and a season high of 99.1 not the highest statistics he's actually the lowest statistics of the players who i've picked from stage two but i think he's more than capable of getting through so i'm going with him that's what that's what we're saying we're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna put our trust in simon stevens next up i've gone for robert thornton it'll be really silly to exclude robert thornton from this list so we're gonna put him in uh, he's had a season average of 89.4 and a season high of 100.5 i think he's more than capable i think he's got plenty of experience to get through this field of players i think he'll do it fairly comfortably as well i think he'll surprise some people this year when it comes to q school and who he manages to beat and how comfortable he does beat them i think uh his experience is probably the best in the field maybe maybe a couple of players who have a little bit more experience than him but not many so yeah i'm gonna go robert thornton next up conan whitehead again a very good player just lost his tour card gonna be wanting to get that tour card back but i think he's very good so we're gonna be going with him uh, he's had a season average of 89.3 and a season high of 103.6 so with those statistics, you'd think he's probably capable of getting a tour card. And that's my reasoning on it. I think he's a very good player. I think he's probably going to get one. Next up, we've got Jim Williams. I think he's a more than capable dart player. I think I can see him getting a tour card this year. This might be his year to do it. So I think... I think he gets a tour card. Uh, running average for the year was 89.75 and his season average high was 101.9. Very capable player. I think he's got a good chance of getting through. Uh, next up, we've got Lewis Williams. He, to me, is one of the best youth or up and coming. I don't know if he's youth anymore. I don't know how old he is and how, how old he is now. But he's one of the best up and coming players there is. Uh, he, he impresses me every time he plays and he had that monster average this year of 117.1. Um, so by that, standard and he had a running average of 90.5 i think he's more than capable of getting a tour card hopefully he plays well he's got a good year of experience behind him on the on the different tours and stuff so i think i think this is his year i think that lewis williams will be getting a tour card Two more players to go. Richie Burnett would be silly to miss out Richie Burnett. He's actually had quite a decent season in the last year. Um, he's played he's played fairly well. He's played in a few of the Pro Tours. He's played in the Challenge Tour and stuff. He's played good. He's had a running average of 89.18 and a season high of 104.9. Very capable player. Very experienced player like, like, uh, like Robert Thornton from earlier. Extremely experienced. Been around forever, basically. And yeah, very good player. I think I think Richie Bennett gets a tour card. And my last pick, I am going with Matthew Dennant, someone who I've marked plenty of times. Very good player. 
season average of 88.9 and a season high of 101.6. He's a very good dart player. I think he gets a tour card. So that's my 18. That's who I think. I, if you want me to do a video going over the rest of the world, Q School as well, let me know in the comment section below. I'll, I'll have a look through some statistics because I'm not going to know the players quite as well as I do the UK Q School people, but I'll try my best and I'll give you give you guys a, a list of who I think or who you should look out for. So that's my 18. Let me know in the comment section below who your 18 players would be as well. Have a look on the PC website, find out who's qualified and let me know who you think is going to win. And yeah, thanks for watching the video, guys. Hope you did enjoy it. If you did, smash a like on it and subscribe if you're brand new thanks for watching the video guys hope you have a good rest of your weekend and yeah enjoy q school 2021 it's going to be good i'm looking forward to it i'll be streaming the stage two as well if you want to come over and check out the channel uh streaming the stage two if you want to ask me any questions about it while we're on let me know and uh, yeah i'll see you there anyway guys thanks for watching the video i'll see you in the next one goodbye